Hello, make sure you subscribe so you never miss an episode. You rate and review my podcast if you like me. And you can follow me on Instagram. It's Yes King Oliver. Tati bye. So um, when people um, depend on something to give them a feeling, their body gets used to that as their default main feeling. And it forgets what it's like without that. So when you try and come off it all at once, whether it's alcohol, sex, weed, drugs, or even just depending on a parent for advice or a best friend, that when they're, or even the Chinese takeaway every week, when that thing isn't there to give your body that feeling which it's seeking, your body can go into shock, which is why some people, when they have been on drugs for so long and they suddenly come off, that they just go into a panic and then go back on it. It has to be a gradual process. Often the time that it's taken to get your body used to that substance, for example, it takes similar to the same amount of time to come off it because your body has depended on something for so long that you cannot just tell your body that it can't have it anymore. I call it like giving a kid a dummy and then taking it away. It doesn't understand why you're taking the dummy away. And if, if it's had its dummy for like years, then it's going to be like, what well, the fuck? This is my dummy. This is my <laughs> cup. When I cry, I suck it. And it comforts me. You've just taken it away. And you can't come off things overnight. Right. So how I feel um, about what you just mentioned, definitely very true. I'm going through that personally right now. Um it takes years and often people go back, but I find um, what helps most is just like, honestly, willpower and determination and like actually really wanting a change rather than being like, oh, you know, I may need this right now. So let's just wing it and go for it, um, which I've tried to do. That did not work. <laughs> so I feel like People will come to a point of maybe either um, a health scare or just a spiritual awakening where they feel this change uh, in themselves and feel the need to like pursue that, you know? Why did you feel the need to change? Like, what was the what was the breaking point? For me, it was you know COVID and all, and like not much to do, and I found myself getting trapped in a sort of negative routine where it was like, okay, wake up, do whatever, and fuck it, let's have a cider, you know? (laughs) And that started turning into a routine, and I noticed it, and then I was getting day drunk and being like, what am I even doing with my life right now, you know? Um, And I actually, the reason why it started is because I had a dream a couple of days ago, And I swear it wasn't actually a dream. I felt like I was dimension hopping and everything was super vivid. I ended up in this angelic, fairyish kind of realm. Um, And I met my friend Ava there, which she does energy work. So that kind of was a massive sign for me of change. And I woke up just like, boom. I'm going to do this. Like I'm going to enlighten myself and raise my vibration and just fucking quit everything, (laughs) alcohol, weed, working on tobacco and just, you know, restart, refresh myself. So this dream, this person in the dream, she's a real person you see in real life, right? But she just happens to tell you that message in the dream as opposed to around your house. Exactly. Yeah. I used to have a crisp addiction, right? And I used to think crisps all the time and I'd have to take action on that thought. Otherwise, I'll just be thinking about crisps all day. Right. Similar to watching porn and having a wank. Right. So I knew that you can't just stop something that your body's dependent on. Like I'm talking about I used to have five packs of crisps a day. Not always five, but say, you know, two, three a day more since I can remember since I was like 11 years old because it had MSG in it. Right. And I was addicted to the salts and the flavors. And when I was angry and on and I was angry about something. It was my comfort crisps. So my body's never had a time when it's not had crisps. And then I realized this is like, I wonder if it's done any damage because I have a good healthy diet and really it's only potato. And I think about how I don't really eat that much compared to what others eat. So Mm. really, if you add the salts in and the fats and all that type of shit, there's like hardly anything compared to an average diet of a fat person my age. So I'm like, well, 
surely it's okay and then I've always had spots and I realized okay I might have a dairy allergy or like a lactose allergy and I looked in the crisps and you see like dairy a uh, milk protein I'm like that is that's milk right which explains why I might have always had bad spots and my favorite flavor yeah. is cheese and onion and then things about corns and grains which are lectins which cause autoimmune disease which means Chill you out. get spots and, you know um psoriasis and shit like that it was like wow if my favorite crisp are Doritos that are only a cheese but they're corn and years ago corn was actually banned for human consumption because it's not supposed to be in our bodies basically um i was like wow maybe this this is why and naturally i knew that to get off an addiction whether it's smoking sex porn drugs whatever ex-boyfriend the way you get out of a routine is every time you think of it do it you feel guilty about the fact you didn't stick to your word right every single time you do it you feel even more guilty and eventually those thoughts end and they release out of your system it's almost like you have it's almost like you want to give up um cigarettes but you've got four packs of cigarettes you can either drop bin them all in the bin right now or smoke each one until you've reached the end of them right mm-hmm. and so what that's doing to your brain is it's giving you what you want but also preparing you that each time you have one you're going to be less likely to have another one again. And as you go through those packs, you reach in the end and your body's already been prepared, say weeks in advance until you reach that last cigarette, as opposed to right, I'm giving up, been in the packet. So for me, it was going with the crisps, feeling so guilty that I shouldn't have done this because I might have six or seven in a day. Then the next day it's five and then it's four. And then before you know it, I'm not even thinking about crisps and therefore there's no thoughts to apply action to because they're not in my head. That's the same for alcohol, same for sex, same for porn. You're just occupied elsewhere and you're not thinking about it. It's so true. And like, that's sort of what I did with alcohol. I mean, the second, so the day after I had the dream, obviously like it's hard to just go completely cold turkey because your body will go into shock. Um, so I had a little bit of vodka and orange juice and I was like, okay, this is my last drink. And I was happy about that. And I knew that if I drink, (laughs) then I will feel guilty and I don't want to backtrack, you know? So there's no point. And like, same with weed. I finished the rest of my weed and I was like, okay, I'm not getting any more. That's it. (laughs) Yeah, exactly that. And what's amazing is that dreams I love how dreams, they give messages, but it's like the dream's not relevant to the reality. So like you might love a friend and in the dream, it's somebody else, but it's the dynamics of that person in that dream. That's the message. And dreams, they tune into everything that we are thinking during the day unconsciously that we don't want to face consciously or we're too busy elsewhere consciously that the only time it can give us a message is when we're sleeping because it's like right you're asleep you're not thinking about anything now's my chance and then it comes in and as long as you take action when you wake up because you're aware that dreams Mm -hmm. have meaning as opposed to why do we dream and then just sort of fuck it you know I'm just gonna fly in my dream and then you wake up I've got work every dream has a meaning and if I go back to the dreams I used to have, bearing in mind I don't don't really dream anymore because I don't really think during the day and therefore there's no thoughts during the night. When I used to think all the time during the day, well, my dream was just, my dreams used to go on all night. I remember going to sleep and dreaming so much that the whole night would feel like forever. Now when I go to sleep, I literally go to sleep within, say, fall asleep within, say, 10 minutes or so. I wake up and I get up and it's morning. And it's like, I literally just close my eyes. Wow. So do you feel like really energized when you wake up? Put it this way. I never yawn, right? Unless I am on a walk and I'm meditating. And that's Mm. because when you are meditating, you're basically going into sleep mode, right? So if I was like sitting on my bed and I'm meditating, I'd naturally get tired. My brain's wanting oxygen because there's yes. just like no um, neurons firing up to, to give it energy, right? But when you're on a walk, you're using energy um, and at the same time, you're um, not... It's, it's like you're going to sleep whilst you're walking. So it's taking energy moving, plus you're tired because you're not thinking. So I often yawn when I'm <laughs> meditating on a walk. However, saying that, it is at like 11, 11 o'clock at night time. So it is excusable to, to yeah. yawn, but yeah. I don't really yawn and I wake up with the same amount of energy every single day 
I, I always have energy. I never get tired because I go to bed at the same time, wake up around the same time and I sleep all the way through like a baby and then boom, it's the morning and I start the day again. Right. Yeah. Routine is so key for that. Um, and it's been so hard. Like I've talked to so many people throughout all of like what's going on right now in the world. And so many people are trying to get back into routine, right? Because there's really no like, um what's the word I'm looking for discipline right now you know everything's just kind of up in the air and hooli lolly and everyone's kind of not really grounded so um that's so important and like I noticed that with myself I noticed that in my friends and you know even like my family members and getting on routine back to routine and like working out like eating like doing what you have to do making sure you go outside (laughs) that is key right now for sure like walks like you said to help yourself become more mindful um and like back into your body essentially yeah, it's too easy to spend time indoors, like especially now everyone's working from home, right? Normally, you'd walk to the office, you, you, so you'd walk to your car outside, you get on public transport outside, you go to the office, you go out for a fag break, you go for lunch in the town, so you actually get out, right? Now it's like, okay, lunch is in the kitchen, I can smoke in, I don't know, the house or the garden, you're not even yeah. going out, and then it's cold, so why would you go outside? And then by the time you finish to work, it's dark, who the fuck goes for a walk in the dark? You know what I mean? So now everyone's in even more and it's like you've got to understand that it's not a it's not a, a choice of um, whether I go for a walk or not you have to go outside we are and we move. even saying this I get backache right and I'm like I don't you wouldn't find a cow in a field just sat on his like sat on his ass with his legs in the air right they're yeah. either standing on all fours moving or sleeping on their side so yeah uh, not just for like mental mental health and just oxygen, but just being outside, the your energies, body. the nature, it balances yourself. And then indoors, for example, I podcast in this room, right? And then I realise if I don't open the window for a few days, that when I come back in this room from outside, like my room, which is ventilated, it fucking stinks. Like someone's just slept in here. So mm-hmm. like if that's what's happening indoors, you don't even realise because you're not going outdoors to then come back in to realise fucking hell, it stinks. But like the particles, the lack of oxygen, the carbon dioxide, just your smelly fucking ass in the room. You need to be outside (laughs) and it does so much to your health. And I go for a walk at night time about 10 30 and I try and go for a walk during the day even if I'm yeah. doing something and I'm busy because I know if I don't I'm gonna drive myself crazy you're gonna over stir time. <laughs> yeah yeah you totally need to a break totally well like yeah for sure man um after I I realized like whoa whoa what's going on I'm like okay well I haven't really even been going outside that much so I've decided morning like you said or during the day, and then one walk at nighttime, because, like, humans are meant to move around, like, back in the olden days, you know, we were always doing things, working so hard, and people have become so lazy, which is um, an effect of health of your body and your mind, like you said, everything is so connected, Um, and, like, even just people sitting on a couch, it's so important to, like, sit on something flat that's hard for a little bit of a time Um, or even the floor just lay down and stretch your back because you do curl over you know when you're sitting on something so soft which I find people often do because they want to feel comfortable yeah like I went for the walk in the woods the other day and um, there's this stream that I found and this like tree that's been chopped off in half perfectly next to the river perfect size and I'm sitting there with my back up straight and it does take energy and work to keep your back straight like we're not like we're, we're not really supposed to be sitting period we're supposed to be on all fours like animals or walking we're not supposed to be arch right all the time you know so sitting down is it's not actually against it's not in balance with nature so it does take energy to keep your spine in that position when our spine's supposed to be flat and then we're on all fours so it does take work to be upright and whenever i'm sitting down this is different because i'm on a beanbag right 
you know so i lay back because <laughs> i'd rather lie down than sit but even though i'm i'm uh, kind of lying and sitting i do feel like my posture is it's not a 100 percent comfortable right unless i had a projector on my str- screen on my on my ceiling then i could lie down but right now it doesn't feel natural and if you think about animals and how they their their bottom of their spine curves at a right angle even right now it's not completely a right angle it's slightly um say 60 degrees not 45 degrees because of how i'm slanted which means the spine is different and then my neck is like moving forward so i'm upright looking at you this is not a natural position and then that's this is why people have backache so many humans have backache and they go through all these types of pillows i haven't had a pillow for seven years so i have my pillows in my bed because who the fuck has a bed without pillows right but when i sleep (laughs) my pillows go on the floor and i sleep on my back with no pillows and i remember when i did this that my i was i was aching for, for like three weeks or so and then there was no pain. So now I sleep without a pillow and I've no back issues whatsoever. I only get a back issue huh. when I bend down and I don't support myself with my leg, with my hand, for example. Okay. Or your core. Yeah. I feel like that's another thing. A lot of people forget to like st- strengthen their spine through their core. Um And it's unfortunate because then when people have pain, you know, most of the time they go to the doctor, hey, doc, I'm in pain, like, what do you have for me? Um, But that's totally a Band-Aid, you know, (laughs) and it's unfortunate. So it's so important to stretch. Yoga is really helpful. Um, Tuning forks. Are you aware of tuning forks? Absolutely. Ooh, they're so great, aren't they? Explain. What is it? Go on. Okay, so I actually have one. I should grab it. Um, They're metal rods, essentially. They were first used on horses to test out how they worked. And then humans decided, oh, well, this is having a good effect. Let's try this on each other. Um, And so pretty much they create a vibration. And you place them along the meridians of the spine as they're vibrating or the face and what it does is it stimulates your nervous system and it essentially sends like many electroshocks through your body. They don't feel like shocks, it's just like vibration. But what it does is they break up tension in your body because of um, the frequency of the hertz that they're at. What hertz is it at? Mine is, let's see, it should say. Everything in the universe vibrates at 5T weight. That's the Earth's resonance, right? People say it's, you know, 493 or whatever. But in terms of, let's look at it, 5T weight. Yes, 5T weight. So (laughs) that is the exact frequency that I used to play and still sometimes do play whilst I'm sleeping. In fact, I'll go. Do, Do that again. I will show you how accurate my sound was compared to that. Okay, now stop it. Stop it and I'll do it. Now you do it and see how accurate it is. See, I'm so in tune that I can do that in demand, right? Because I listen to it when I'm having a shower. Because when I have a shower, the vibration is going into the water. The water is going into my body. And the body is absorbing that water with that vibration. And therefore, my cells and my blood and my brain all vibrates at that vibration and cells divide and create new lovely cells at that vibration. And so, um, do you know what? That is amazing because I always use my app. That right? is that amazing. Tuning, how, 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 um, how, how long does that noise last for? Um, lost count. <laughs> Right, so it slows down when you put it on your body. It does. It's still going. And even when you can't hear it anymore, it's still sending a vibration. So you, can you feel it or hear it or both? Both. That's fucking amazing. So you can hear it and feel it through your bones. Yes. Uh, th- Want to this... something cool? Yeah. If you put it in your mouth... 
because your mouth holds so much energy. It's the most vibrant thing on our whole bodies. That's why we kiss with our lips and everything. Um, but yeah, if you put it in your mouth, it sends it all like internally through your body and it's so loud. It's just amazing. <laughs> so there was a um a story of a boy who was who who couldn't speak. He was uh deaf or something anyway he couldn't speak right we couldn't hear yeah he couldn't hear and his dad was convinced that the doctors said he can't hear but he's going to find a way and so basically it's cut long story short they created a um, instrument that they connected to his uh, elbow because for some reason the elbow was connected to the to the to this spine which is connected to the brain or something that the the noise vibrations of which he would speak into would vibrate onto the say device tuning fork he had and it would send the vibrations through the bone of his elbow and it would vibrate into his ear canal which meant he could hear the sound so the bones absorb the vibration and he could hear the vibrations off the bone and therefore hear the language because the language is just vibrations that we put together as communication so this person who's never or could never hear before could hear based on the elbow or whatever bone it was amplifying the vibrations same thing what you just said wow that's amazing huh so anyone that's deaf out there get yourself a tuning fork try it out see for yourself if they are deaf i don't think they're listening to this (laughs) maybe they can read lips you never know (laughs) yeah they're trying to read our lips um so yeah, that's just an amazing story. That was actually in the book called Think and Grow Rich. Um, it was the, the, well, the audio version is the same as the uh, book, but it was them telling the story of this. And basically what it comes down to is any limitations you put on yourself are just limitations you put on yourself and that there is always a way somehow to create what you want if you keep going and don't give up and don't allow somebody to say no. And... I'm currently working on a project that if it does go through would only have gone through because I didn't take no for an answer and I kept finding a way and I pray to the holy lord that by the time this episode goes out I have co- I've got that deal. I pray to the holy lord as well. <laughs> Let's say pray together. Dear Jesus, okay. if you existed, help me get my money. Amen. <laughs> Jesus, please send him love and abundance. Amen. Um, so, as you know, like Lady Gaga, Jesse J, Katy Perry, Britney Spears, me, you almost, right? Um, we all cut our hair off. We all shaved our hair. We all had long hair. I had very long hair for six years. I didn't cut it off. It was multicolored, like six, nine. Colors of the rainbow. Yeah, you've seen it. And um, I shaved it off. Britney Spears, you know, Lady Gaga, they all shaved off their hair. And what it means is in your mind is starting again new being reborn you are going through a um a detox stage by stopping smoking and alcohol and you've cut half your hair off literally half your hair has gone <laughs> and that's because in your mind whether there's science behind it or not which there is there's negative energy vibrations and all that whatever stored in that dead hair which is gone yeah and so energy. um tell me your thoughts on why you cut your hair and why that long Okay, so um, how long? <laughs> <laughs> we'll go back to before. So I used to have dreadlocks when I was sixteen. Um, I was going through a lot at the time, obviously, as any sixteen-year-old does. <laughs> um, and My kids are too small. <laughs> <laughs> after, after I sort of matured a little bit and experienced what I did. Um, I realized it was time to cut my dreads off. So, because they were holding all this old, stale energy that I no longer needed. Um, So I cut them off and restarted. Then, I dyed my hair all the colors of the rainbow. You know, I went nuts. I was still a teenager. I'm 24 now. Um, My hair before I cut it currently was about a little bit longer than my shoulders, I'd say. And I decided it was dead. It needed new growth like a plant when it has dead leaves. Um, And it just wasn't doing me any purpose. So I just took a whim, did it myself, and noticed a massive shift. Actually, when I did it, I felt like 
tingles all the way through my spine. I felt so light and I was like, woohoo, I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> That's the thing, right? When you have long hair, it's like having a scarf on all day during the house. When you go out, every time you go out, you got a scarf on, right? Having something on your neck, it's it's it takes weight. Like when I wear a scarf, I can literally feel my shoulders aching. I'm like, it's a fucking scarf. It's just a bit of fluff. So all day, every day of having that. Think about it. Hair is heavy, right? If you when you type your hair, there is weight to it. But you don't realize until you don't have the hair. So it's just above your shoulders. You've now got no hair on your shoulders so you will feel a relief on your neck and your your back and everything it's it's there so and most most women not all women but most have long hair and it goes over their body and they don't know what it's like to feel that nothing like you can move your head move your neck and there's nothing yeah. and i know for example how i used to feel with long hair it used to drive me crazy like i got to the point where I was just lying down. It was there. It was heavy. Yeah, six years of not cutting my hair. I'd have a, I'd have a shower, and the weight of it when you've washed it, it's just like fucking hell. Anyway, I shaved it all off, and it's just so free. I can go in the shower, no shower cap. I can just lift my head back like I'm a monk on a waterfall. I was just, just gonna say, that. and it just goes down. It just goes on my face, and I come out, and it's dry. Uh, you know, I used to have to wear a shower cap every time I went to the, the swimming pool and the spa and the jacuzzi area. I was the only person there only bloke there uh with a fucking shower cap in a jacuzzi and everyone must have been like what the fuck is that person doing there with a shower cap on his head <laughs> you know what i mean and it's just me like i'm talking like a woman's black shower cap just in the jacuzzi with a loads of men who've just been to the gym and loads of women that have just done their yoga plays whatever and there's me just sat there for three hours because i spent three hours there thinking and meditating with a fucking shower cap on my head and it was the same shower cap i used in the bath <laughs> that is amazing <laughs> I love that so much um mm. I have a question for you yeah what uh what is your feeling about smudging with herbs um as in uh, getting like um um mint leaves and rubbing it on your body <laughs> no like sage and palo santo Paul and Athene um so i don't know what that polo thing is what is it oh my gosh okay so it's actually um a piece of wood from one of the oldest trees in the world wood wow so it's kind of unfortunate because when people found out about palo santo they were just chopping down the trees like crazy to make the sticks for people to smudge um, so it's so important if you are getting Palo Santo to make sure it's ethically sourced so that you're, you know, sending love to the environment and not contributing to the, the killings. <laughs> but it's really, it cleans the air actually while it's burning, which is one of the only smokes in the world that does that. So incense sticks, are they good to breathe in or not really? No, unless you know exactly what's in it. Yeah, because I bought some Instant 6 on, on Amazon, and obviously they smell nice, but my room is literally the same size as a fucking toilet. It's just tiny. And so when I light one, it's it's there. Like, you can't get rid of it. And I find myself... I could feel it in my mouth, and I asked myself once, "Is it? this is smoke. You can't just... Any smoke is bad, whether you light a tree on fire, cigarette. Why is the incense good? It's smoke. And it was like, even candles are a kind of smoke. So you're basically breathing in wax in the air. It's like, is this really good for you? Um, yeah. But, and the answer is probably not. But again, moderation, like anything. But in terms of the sage thing, if there is like scientific microscopic proof that when you rub it in your body, your cells respond. Like there's certain bracelets that when you wear them, the energy in in that bracelet goes into your yeah probably something like that yeah it does something under a microscope to the to the cells it's kind of like relaxes the the cells just like that tuning fork does um so mm -hmm. rubbing in sage and stuff like that it probably does if it's the right thing like you can't just light any herb you can't light a peppermint no plant. that's the <laughs> certain thing which does something like your body has to react to that specific herb. So yeah, I do believe in all that shit, of course, even though I don't 
I don't have that. Although I'm growing an avocado plant in my own cupboard. Awesome. Yes. And if people are smudging, I'll give you a little tip. Make sure you um, go under your feet as well. And just to get your, your whole entire aura. And sometimes I even open my mouth and let a bit of smoke enter my mouth and then blow it out just as like internally clearing <laughs> a way of internally clearing or something but I love that I find it works just like I said with the mouth there's so much energy around it and like inside yeah <clears throat> what's interesting is I find that the mouth heals the quickest out of anywhere on the body right because whenever for example I get a an ulcer or a not an ulcer if I get like um I'm trying to explain this. Kinker? <laughs> no, no, no. It's like it's like if you get a a cut or a, a mouth ulcer or something. For me, anyway, it heals very quickly. Whereas if you cut your arm or your knee or your head, it can take quite a while. So there's something to that. Maybe it's a saliva which has healing properties, or just the fact that the whole thing of a mouth heals quickly because of the energy. Well, I do find that the mouth heals quicker than any part of the body. Right, for it. sure. Um, I used to have my Medusa pierced. I took it out because I was seeing my 90-year-old grandma and I didn't want her to have a heart attack. <laughs> <laughs> but I started working at a piercing shop before the second lockdown and um, my mentor re-pierced my Medusa, which, if you guys don't know, it's right on top of your lip. Um in the middle lines up with your third eye and it healed so so quickly like I'm talking one day wasn't even swollen we were good <laughs> and Nan's like oh I like get that off your nose you look yeah, like a trend <laughs> she doesn't Man, be know. nice to me I know eh? I'm disappointed in you Nan come on <laughs> do you think do you think back in our grandparents days that they would have just happily, you know, got their nipples pierced. Do you think back in our days, like uh, our grandparents got their nipples pierced and clits pierced and Prince Albert's and stuff like that? Because think about it. Does your nan have her ears pierced? I don't know if my... I don't... No, she doesn't. doesn't. It must be like a new thing. But when you go back even further and you look at say, African tribes, they literally have fucking rings on their neck and their earlobes opened up and their you know, yeah. fucking stuff, stones in their nose and their ears. So piercings like that have been happening for years but in terms of our grandparents do you reckon they just got their nipples pierced like they walked to the local I mean it wasn't even like piercing shops like obviously there was tattoo shops but can you imagine like your nan at, like when you're going into a shop yeah I want my clip pierced I know eh <laughs> just, like, like, please. probably homeschool with like you know sewing needles <laughs> the old school way do you reckon they would have done it themselves like an apple one side and then they pin the other side and some ice cubes Maybe. <laughs> I mean, I know I've done it before back in the day, <laughs> but I'm still young. But yeah, I find like cultural piercings are so interesting. Um, I have spacers for energetic purposes. I've always really been drawn to like African culture for some reason. Maybe it's a past life thing. But I find I did it because sending like energy through and past me I guess and I liked the idea of like having a crystal in my ear yeah so that's the reason that I did it <laughs> like to do the ears um end up closing up or have you got a hole in your ear for life they do it depends how big you go mine are only um zero gauge so they can go back but I also hear heal very quickly it depends on the person so you're telling me that you can create a hole in your ear it will create scar tissue around the middle and then that scar tissue will fuse back together. Yeah, it's never really like the same. It's never like back to a pinprick, but it's close enough. So it starts to grow like new skin over the old, over the the, 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 the scar skin. Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> That's amazing. Yeah. Having crystals in your ear, right? I, I, for example, you could put an incense thing through your ear, right? <laughs> No, imagine like a small piercing, <laughs> just a normal piercing. Obviously, the incense end is tiny, yeah? You could put that through your ear or put it through the nose, right? Like you're piercing in your nose. Or put it through your, um. imagine you've got your 
top of your nose pierced by your eyes or your, your septum, put the incense stick through there. Um, walk around with like just smoke coming off your nose like a bull, like a dragon. <laughs> You can imagine you walk into the town centre with incense sticks, and when you blow like, briefly your nose like a dragon, it just blows to one side. <laughs> that would be like, great. Like a dragon. You actually made me think of a really good invention. Thank you for that. Um... Like, literally, like as you said, crystals in your ear, um, like incense sticks for your your nose, and like even like matches and stuff. Just or um, like fireworks up your ass. <laughs> Essential oil nose rings. Or like a sparkler, like just, you know, essential oil nose rings. Yeah, that would be a, a new form of aromatherapy. <laughs> yeah, or like um, just imagine um, essential oil nipple piercings and you go to like um, an escort Ooh. massage and she's um, sort of leaning over you with her tits just falling into your face and rubbing up and down. <laughs> imagine like a, um, a vibrating uh, nipple bar, yeah? And it, but it's all sensual and like lots of oils. So she starts on the bottom and her boobs rub up your legs all, all the way to your face. But the bars have like a vibration, like a tuning fork. So it vibrates if I have to wait. It's soaked in oils. And so you, she's moving up the body and just going up and down. And it's like a mixture of um, um, like a dominatrix kinky, <laughs> therapeutic, spiritual sexual releasing your sexual energies and becoming in tune to yourself like there's probably that stuff out there because it doesn't have to necessarily be mean a nipple bar it could just be as i said something that vibrates and that you could put in the hole which you could put in your ear your your nose your eye or whatever's pierced so but it's just an idea for nipples I like that i like that <laughs> that's incredible right I'll so <clears throat> oliver <laughs> um what are some ways that you practice mindfulness that you have found beneficial in your lifestyle um every time i think of something i take action immediately and people will say you know you're obsessed you can't control your thoughts and i'm like listen i'm in control of my choices and actions i'm never going to have to convince you that i am because how am i supposed to do that right and I'm not going to live my life not doing something because you might think I've got a problem, right? For example, if I think about getting a bag of crisps, I'll go immediately. If I think about going to the Chinese for a takeaway, I'll go. If I think about a business idea, I'll do it. If I think about taking a shit, I'll do it. I don't prolong or procrastinate. Why? Because my whole life, I procrastinated everything to the point where the thoughts built up in my head that's what Tourette's was it was just excessive thinking simulating face masters for the twitching swearing was the frustration and so now to make sure I do not go back into that pattern of going over stuff in my head to do I'm up to date on my thought like emails coming in when I've got an email I deal with it do not prolong it okay because you're going to get emails coming in your life all the time there's always going to be someone else to do and if you don't manage your thoughts you're going to just get overloaded with so much shit to do so Thinking and doing is a is is the most powerful thing I can say because that keeps my brain clear in a meditative state all the time unless I'm choosing to consciously meditate because for me meditation is just no thoughts coming in right so just think it and do it don't procrastinate write it down on a board prioritize the ones you need to do now do it stop leaving thoughts in your head fucking do it now yeah cut yes. <laughs> living in the moment it's true it's so rare as humans that we live in the moment we're always thinking ahead usually and think and living in the moment helps us stay grounded stay put get what we have to do done <laughs> yeah, but it's, it's, it's more than that, that. Like being, being present but you can't be present if you've in got present. thoughts in your head because if you've got thoughts in your head you're in the future or the past so you've got to get thoughts out your head, which I do and I did. Otherwise, they just stay in your head, whether it's getting a Gucci handbag, whether it's asking your boyfriend to go to dinner somewhere or, you know, there's it's just another thought in your head. And me personally, I don't like to have thoughts in my head, right, because I know what happens if, if they build up because I think so excessively. High brain activity, there's going to be so much thoughts in my head. So now I just manage them as they come in. Because mm -hmm. I don't know the results, they do not get dealt with. But yeah, you can't truly be present if you're if you've got stuff you should have done and stuff you want to do. 
because you can't be it's like when when you're driving you're not focusing on the road if you're thinking and i've had so many near-death experiences in the car because i'm thinking and all of a sudden i've gone through red traffic lights thinking it was green because i was in my head and so this is serious like Mm -hmm. the difference between being in your head when you're sorry being out your head and aware when you're in your head is literally dead or alive you cannot be aware if you are in your head speaking to the voice thinking processing and this is how I've almost died so many times. And because of that, I don't think when I'm, say, driving anymore, because I know the catastrophic effects, literally. Yeah. Looking at, looking at green traffic lights of the other side of the road the other day. So I like to test myself to prove that my discipline is important. And it's like you do something for so long, you take it for granted. So I never think when I'm driving, right? So I'm just used to everything being perfect. And then all of a sudden I'll think slightly no and i shouldn't do and then this thing happens like i was looking at the traffic lights they were red it went green i was thinking it was my traffic lights because i look for the other ones so i can get get ahead and then, and then so when that went green i thought it was mine and then all of a sudden i pulled out and all the other cars are coming because it's green for them and there's just all the other cars waiting and there's me that's just gone they're all hooting and i'm like you fucking idiot that's why you don't think you're driving you fucking twat and i had a massive <laughs> go at myself because I could have died. So literally, there is no excuse. When you put a system in place, there's a reason for it. And you can't break it. Like, because there's a reason why you put it in place. Mm-hmm. For sure. Um, I find, like, a static dancing has been helping me a lot recently with that. Especially because, like, the whole movement thing and we can't really go out. I love dancing personally. And the more you practice things, the better you are at it. So if I stop dancing, I'm not going to become good. (laughs) Um, So when I'm spinning and I have so much energy, I'm just like, you know what? Let's do this. It feels amazing. You're, You're moving everything around. It's not stagnant. You're getting it out, you know. And you just feel amazing after. And, like, yeah, daily, daily activities. Dancing and walking and breathing. Literally, when I have a shower, and I don't do it all the time, but when I have a shower, I like to play the radio, right? So I'm in the shower and I'm dancing in the shower like I'm in a nightclub. So, for example, if it's like a a Dave the Getter song that comes on, I literally, in my mindset... Imagine I'm in a club and I'm my hands are going in the air and I'm washing my armpits like I'm in a club and I'm tapping my foot and I'm getting out. I'm using the towel to dry my bollocks with like into the beat. And it literally starts your day on a high and just, you know, walking around the house and the music's on in the background rather than walking to the kitchen in silence. Fucking dance, like going down the stairs. You're going down the stairs in time with the beat and you're just like mm-hmm. constantly in the groove and having a great time and then it's just like once you get used to dancing and like feeling not stupid like it just feels great to dance because when you move your muscles are releasing energy you're releasing toxins and your heart beat goes up and you yeah your your builds up and you feel good you smile you think this is fucking stupid but i don't care and then you don't care about life and that's great when you don't care about life because you're supposed to feel good all the time yeah, it's like being in your inner child with no exactly. judgment. Just get yeah. it out there. <laughs> I believe that everyone is secretly their child. But when you grow up, you've got to be mature. You go to an office, you've got to be professional. You've got to be appropriate around people. But the, everyone's that child that, that they were growing up. You know, everyone picks their nose and farts and scratches their vagina when no one's listening. You know, someone goes out the office having a pick. You don't see all this shit because you're scared to be judged. But everyone is doing it. Everyone's their child. And I love it. Like I'm watching a program on on on, on Sky. It's called The Good Doctor. And basically this 70-year-old president of a hospital has been diagnosed with cancer. And he's just gone back to see his childhood crush when he was 16. And Aww. he's talking about all the stuff he did when he was young and he was 16. I'm like, he's 70 years old and he's just literally got an Uber. And he's like, right, let's go on a road trip back to my school. And he's reminiscing on his childhood. And I'm like, that's not actually good because no. surely you should have so much going on in your life that you don't need to go back to that, what you would call the best times of your life when you were 16. But it just shows you that that child in you never goes. But because you get older, he's a president of a massive hospital board or CEOs. Everyone's got to be professional and, you know, mature. 
and it's just fake and bollocks. Yeah, it's true. Well, I find like adults often feel like, oh, you know, like I'm an adult now. Like, so this is how I have to be. And it's very serious and everything. But it's like, find that like play in your life again, you know, like what actually like brings your soul joy, like go back to that inner child and like have fun, you know, like appreciate things that you can't as like you don't think you can as an adult be- just because you're an adult like go back to that like enchanted kind of energy it makes such a difference rather because you know people get set in their ways they kind of become like stale and this is it <laughs> but it's like explore explore yourself like in any way you can especially right now yeah, for example, right, if you think about um, when you are at school and you're, say, you know, 16, 18 years old, right, you are a, a person, your personality, right? Most people, they never, ever change unless they have a reason to change, right? So most people, when they're 18, they are the same person when they are 25. Why? Because they've often got the same groups of friends. They like the same things. They go from school to college to university. They leave university at, say, you know, 24, 25. So you haven't had a reason to change up until then. So what you are when you're 18 often is what you're going to be when you're 25. When you're 25 and you get a job and you get a husband or whatever, unless you have a reason to change, you are that same person as you are when you're 18. Now, unless you have a reason to change at 25, you're going to be that same person when you're 40, when you're 50, when you're 60 unless you have a reason to change because you've probably got the same friends from school same neighbors whatever so everyone grows up they get different jobs they have to act mature with different jobs or whatever but they're the same person at 50 that they were when they were 18 right and that is crazy because that just says what i just said that we are the same people forever we just choose to be a certain side when we're around certain people like if you're with the queen you'd be like Good afternoon, Your Royal Majesty. I am at your service. <laughs> and then when you're with your your, your mum, you get your tits out and you're with your friends. And you're just like <laughs> smoking a joint and, you know, with your neighbour. Hello, Maureen. Hello. You know, so yeah, we show different sides. But really, we are the same person that we were when we were 18, which is an immature, immature person that just wants to have fun, wants to dance, go clubbing, fuck a load of people, have fun, talk and, and just enjoy life. And that's all we have to do is go back to that person because that's all there is in life dancing singing farting laughing about it going on walks and eating good food that's it right yeah find the joy you once had it's so true um we don't ever have to let go of that and i often find that we forget these things like you know, things are constantly, constantly changing in our lives but um we can introduce things to continue to make ourselves happy in other ways that you know could be from when we were young or introducing new things into our life um to help us grow as we do as humans <laughs> yeah so like you know when we're, when we're born we are born into say a certain energy pattern or our parents do certain things and that is our like exposure to that pattern for example if our parents are business people and run a business and we used to dad always coming back late because he's running a business right or your mum does a business you're naturally gonna want to be like them and run a business the same as if they go to work nine to five get back put the dinner on you're naturally going to start to do that um i find that people always revert back to the one thing that they were doing when they were younger so for example if you were say 18 and you started off playing piano and then you went into guitar or violin or whatever you'd always go back to piano if for example you were a tattoo artist and you went into selling furniture selling crystals or whatever you go back to tattoo why because if you could choose one thing that makes you happy you go and do it that's it so why would you choose anything else like the new instrument the new job when you already chose that one thing that was going to make you happy like the tattoo thing because you chose it like you don't choose something to then choose something else you choose this because you enjoy it so you've already chosen that one thing like ed sheeran for example he loved playing guitar and singing to people in like small local areas like a pub yeah he gets some massive record deals sells out arenas 
then he just goes back to selling, talking, um, uh, you know, doing little gigs at the local pubs. So you always go back to where you started off. Even like, you know, Kevin Hart, for example, big arenas. Now he, he did his special on Netflix in his house with literally 50 people. Everything <laughs> does a full circle. And we always go back to who we were and what we were. Because if we have a choice, we choose what we want. So what we've already chosen is, it's like, you could say an ex, you could say an ex-boyfriend, right? As long as he wasn't a prick. That you could <laughs> be with somebody and you kind of want more because you want better, whatever. Time goes past and you realise there isn't anything better. So then you go back to the last one. You know, we always go back to the first option because it was often the right option because why would we choose the wrong option in the first place? So that goes back mm-hmm. to just being that child who you were because it was when you it made you happy. And this is why so many old people, they talk about school because that was the best time of their life. They had people, they had friends, they were free. They had no mortgage and fucking kids to worry about because their parents did it all. <laughs> and then life just takes over the soul. Right. It's true. Um, have you ever, this is totally off topic, have you ever heard of twins in the womb and one is more powerful sometimes and they actually absorb the other twin? So do you mean um, uh, physically in the womb or right. energetically in the womb, like they take each other's energy or like nutrients of the physical body? I don't really know like I feel like both but I just recently my mom recently told me that I was supposed to be a twin and I absorbed the other twins maybe energy and nutrients uh so I get what you're saying because you're a very high energy right um so for example my parents both have very high energy right so their sperm and their egg would have been vibrating at a very high frequency which would have created me. So you've got vibration sperm seven here, vibration egg seven here. You put it together, you get 14. I am now 14 vibration. I'm turbocharged, right? I'm two powerful energies into one, which is why my life was so fucking complicated because I was trying to balance out my energy, right? So let's just say that when you, um, when the sperm and the egg came together, right, it will either fertilize one egg or two, or somehow those two eggs merge as one, that sperm fertilizes the same thing, which is two. And essentially you're the you're two you're, you're two lots of nutrients and two lots of energy vibration. Um it's almost like a tree. Rather than yeah. it going from a trunk and having loads of branches, you've got tree, two like trunks, and then branches. They've sort of like merged off, but they're still together as one. So I haven't heard of that, but I can understand what you're saying, that you are both the the nutrients and the energy of two different forms of life. So, for example, one sperm, but two lots of eggs, because obviously one sperm can only fertilize one egg. But yeah, absolutely makes sense. I haven't heard of it like that. Right. <clears throat> and... So, um, my mom you went went my to sister. a psychic. No, I didn't. She wasn't alive. <laughs> Fuck you. My mom went to a psychic, and the psychic, without my mom saying anything, was like, You are going to have twins. And one was supposed with your youngest daughter, and one, the other twin was supposed to be a boy. And it passed, didn't it? And she says, Yes. And it's interesting because in this life, I'm bisexual and I feel very balanced in my masculine and my feminine energy. So I think that has something to do with it. It absolutely makes sense. Whether it's just linking patterns or there is science to it, no one will ever know. But it absolutely makes the perfect sense. Because as you said, if you are female and you have the balance of masculine, if you are, say, the twin of your brother then you have the energy of of masculine. So it's like the feminine and the masculine both mixed in a beautiful combination of yin and a yang. Oh, thank you. <laughs> it's true. It's true. Um, what, what date is your birthday? January 3rd, 97. So, for example, I, I believe that when we're born, we were given certain energies based on the planets that were there at that time. But in terms of... Um, um astrology and signs for example a scorpio is a water of an aquarius which is a fire for example i do believe that you can find links in all of them but if you for example imagine you've got you know january to december which is 12th 
six of them go into the other six, right? Mm -hmm. Because there's always, um, say, an, a, there's always one that goes in perfect harmony with the other, which means there's actually six energies, not 12, right? Even though there's 12 star signs, when the six go into the other six, it means that there's six energies. Now, if you go to its common, lowest common denominator, six goes into three, and three goes into one, right? Because it's, you know, the sperm and the egg comes together mm -hmm. as one. So do you think that there's specific star signs that only merge with the with one other star sign, for example, out of the six, or do they all merge irrelevant to, say, the planets that were there at the time? Does that make sense? Like, yeah. Um... Specific. So January will only mix with an October. That, that is a stronger connection than, say, a March and a a June because if the energies go from say you know seven six five four three two one Jan you know it has to get weaker because in order for it to attract again and do a loop it needs to go like you know seven six five four three two one seven six five four three two one so that's why some people are weaker in energy and yes. some people are strong in energy because Aquarius is a bigger and you know what I'm trying to say yeah um I feel like it's really rare for couples to have the same star signs like, I've tried dating other Capricorns. It doesn't work at all. No flipping way. We're both way too stubborn. So a lot of the time, maybe, like, if you are the same star sign, you have too many similar characteristics. But seeing that, it also, everything really depends on your rising as well and your moon sign. Um, so your moon, your rising is kind of like, how people see you, how like you present yourself, whether you know it or not. So mine's Aries, which is fiery, <laughs> fire, and it might stick around, catch. <laughs> right? When I found out, I'm like, yeah, that makes sense. Um, and then my moon, for instance, is Scorpio. So I'm quite a sexual person. Scorpio is water. It's known, yeah, to be very like sexual and have like that sort of dark side of the moon like dark humor um and that kind of thing so it all really like when I found out my sun my rising and my moon everything made so much sense and also like with the guys I've dated looking back on their signs being like oh yeah that's why <laughs> like we just clashed in these ways <clears throat> because I would constantly go for well I like I said the Capricorns didn't work but I would constantly go for fire signs and it was just too much energy. Us together, it was heated and yeah, didn't work. So I need something like ground. My boyfriend currently is water. Um, so like that's the opposite. Water is the opposite of earth, right? Um, just finding things like that. It's, it's so interesting when you dive so, deep. So you're Scorpio and Scorpio is, um, is a sec high in sexual energy. Mm -hmm. see what's interesting is that is i notice traits in people and i see the same traits in people but if you look at them physically they also look very similar for example first person i fell in love with she was a scorpio right third of november i think it was what did you see your birthday was mine's january 3rd but my scorpio is my moon yeah usually right. november uh, november october you, you're not an actual scorpio right no so what star sign are you my sun sign is Capricorn, which just passed. Or actually, we're in it right now. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I'm an Aquarius, which is the 28th of Jan. So you're not an Aquarius, are you? No. Uh, my birthday is the 3rd. That's the thing. It's like it's based on, like, star signs, like, the month, just one. But it's not just one. It's the, as you said, the sun and the moon. It's not just one. It's, it's all three, which yeah. is very powerful. Um. Do you want to end it here? Or is there anything you want to speak about? Oh, if you guys go on to CoStar, you can figure out your sun, your rising, and your moon. Just put it out there. <laughs> uh, pretty much, that's all I have to say. Get some crystals in your life. Get some plants. Do you want to promote anything? Um... I make candles and bath salts, which I will be posting on my Instagram very soon. I will let Oliver know when. Which is, say your Instagram. My Instagram is at L-I-L-Lil Bamboo Shoot. 
<laughs> a little bamboo shoot. Little bamboo shoot. Okay, yeah, well, I'm going to stop it there. Wait there. Bye, guys. <laughs> Bye, then. Right, hang on. Howdy. Thanks for listening to my episode. Uh, if you could remember to rate and review the episode after you've listened, that'd be fantastic. And also subscribe so when I release a new one, you get a notification. And also, please tell your friends on socials about me podcast. Now, I'm going for a poo. I'll be back later. Have a great day and speak to you soon.